The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Got a two-star review here on this show the other day. That review, which was on the Master Matt Talk feed and not this or the Master Short Time feed, said they missed the longer shows and these short ones weren't cutting it. First, thank you for the feedback. Everyone has different tastes and this format has mostly been agreeable to listeners. This show, Short Time, actually started in this format in November of 2013. Went to interviews when the scores stopped, and the show grew from there. The interview shows aren't done, but I've been busily handling the clients that, you know, these clients I've got with the network. I'm also not going to chase down the same interviews as everyone else. Doing things differently is what I've always done. And that being said, yes, I miss my show with my interviews. I'll be picking them back up here soon. But I've always got a ton of irons in the fire. So when my time becomes strained, I put my shows on the back burner. I don't put short time ahead of any other show on the network. These shots keep me fresh, help me promote every level of wrestling, and keep the episodes in the feed. I don't want to just stop doing shows and then lose listeners. There's over 70 podcasts out there. This was the second one ever. So, at least in wrestling. I know people have come and gone from the various Matt Talk shows, but I like this format. I like the interview format, but this is also my business. I have to make sure my time is cost effective. This is why I pitch the Patreon links at the end of each show. Maybe I can take some time away to develop some of those shows in the offseason, but as my wife says, there is no offseason. I put out 448 episodes in 2019, always putting my clients and affiliate shows ahead of my own. Thank you for the feedback, constructive criticism, positive reinforcement, or even negative feedback. It's all taken into consideration. That long-winded intro is by your host, me, Jason Bryant, and this is Short Time Shots, the mostly daily look back at the scores and more from the world of wrestling. Also, programming note, Joey Dance still has cats, and the Attack Style Wrestling Podcast will be coming back with NCAA champion Daryl Weber. We'll record the first episode in over a year at some point next week. In duels, we lead off with the first victory in over 60 years for Presbyterian College. The Blue Hose, yeah, Division I team in Clinton, South Carolina, hosted NAIA Truett McConnell on Wednesday and shut out the Bears 44-0. It was a bit of a forfeit-laid meet. This is the first year of Division I wrestling for Presbyterian, which did have a team back in the early 50s when there was no Division I. This is the smallest school in Division I and started both men's and women's wrestling this year. Closest match of the night came in Division II, where Indianapolis edged Finley 19-18 on criteria E. Total number of takedowns scored from decisions, major decisions, and technical falls. Yeah, that's A, B, C, D, E. Fifth one down. You don't see those too often. Also in Division Two, Belmont Abbey top Queens 36-12 and Fairmont State beat Kent State. Let's try that again. Fairmont State beat Kent State Tuscarawas, which I think I'm saying right, is a varsity NCWA team. They beat them 35-0. It's the first win since the program at Fairmont State was added back. And we're not exactly sure if Kent State's branch campus is actually a countable opponent under NCAA rules. They are degree granting. They are varsity. They are not NCAA or NAIA. They are not junior college. They are in that no man's land of small college. They're affiliated with the USCAA. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Anyway, Fairmont's last win came at some point in the 1982-83 season. Also in Division II, Fort Hayes State beat Central Missouri 28-12. The second closest match of the night was in Division Three, where Pitt Bradford topped Penn State Barron 28-27. This one came down to just the second criteria, most six-point victories, which favored Pitt Bradford. Too many forfeits here, though, too. In Division Three, Castleton topped Rhode Island College 31-6. Springfield topped Norwich 37-9. North Central topped Chicago 22-15. Otterbein beat Case Western Reserve 38-15. But Case Western Reserve did get one win on senior night as Connor Forrest got a fall in the first period to push the Spartans past Ohio Wesleyan 27-26 in the duel's final match. NAIA Cumberland University doubled up Kentucky Wesleyan 30-15. And in another forfeit field duel, NAI Warner Pacific beat Division Three Pacific 29-9. Just four matches were actually contested there. That's kind of disappointing. Rochester, the one in Minnesota, blanked Northland, Itasca, Minnesota West, and Ridgewater by a combined 227 to nothing to win the school's eighth straight Minnesota Collegiate Athletic Conference. Scratch that. That is the Minnesota College Athletic Conference Championship. Yeah, eighth in a row. Also in the NJCAA, Cloud County beat Barton 30-21. On the women's side, Lime picked up a pair of wins, beating Bruton Parker 49-1 and Limestone 37-9. Limestone also beat Bruton Parker 38-6. On the docket in Division I, three of the four teams in action are from the PSAC, or the MAC East, depending on how you look at it. Lockhaven heads to Appalachian State, while Edinburgh faces Bloomsburg. 
In Division II, Emmanuel takes on Limestone. Nebraska Kearney heads to Warrensburg to take on Central Missouri. Out in the Rockies, Western Colorado faces Adams State, while New Mexico Highlands, which is in Las Vegas, the one in New Mexico, obviously, facing Shadron State. A decent night of action coming up in Division Three is some, but not all of the matches include UW Lacrosse heading to UW Whitewater, Wartburg heading to Wartburg, Wart, Wartburg heading to Luther, Olivet's at Trine, Washington and Jefferson is at Teal, Alma's at Adrian, Loris takes on Central, and of course, I can't resist the epic battle between the student princes of Heidelberg and the polar bears of Ohio Northern. In mixed division action, Fontbonne is at Lincoln and Central Methodist is at Westminster. From the Daily Wrestling News, the St. Paul Pioneer Press talks with Minnesota heavyweight Gable Stevenson about his time away from the mat during his suspension. And as we all know, no charges were actually filed as Stevenson is the top-ranked heavyweight in the country. Pretty cool story out of West Virginia, well, kinda, really, as Davis and Elkins head coach Jerry Boland, who spent a ton of time teaching and coaching in New Jersey. Well, he's got four wrestlers from Burlington County, New Jersey alone on his first-year program at Davis and Elkins. Five-point move with our man Timmy Hands profiles Alex Sancho. My name is Sancho. Prior to the Thor Masters, not the Thor Ragnarok. That would be a completely different tournament. Don't know if Alex is ready for that one yet. A day late, but still relevant. The Daily Collegian, the student paper at Penn State, talks about Kale Sanderson and the Penn State take on the transfer portal. Ooh, portals. Due to an issue with MailChimp on Wednesday morning, the Daily Wrestling News didn't go out. So here's some things you may have missed. Like, oh, I don't know the story from NBC Sports and Nick Zaccardi about Kyle Snyder living in Kale Sanderson's basement. For real. Cody Goodwin from the Des Moines Register is back with his weekly mailbag. No worries, Cody. The NWMA Awards have been paid for. You won't have to lie to your folks anymore. Also from the Daily Collegian was the announcement that super senior Anthony Kassar's college career is over. That's a bummer. Guy was kind of weird. One trip to the New Jersey State Tournament. One state title. It's going to turn out one trip to the NCAA Tournament. One national title. How many people can say that? I Russell reported the former Penn State wrestler Brody Teske was transferring to Northern Iowa. He appeared in the student directory at Iowa Central, according to a tweet noticed by The Brain, Willie Saylor. Also, Austin Gomez of Iowa State is seeking a medical red shirt. Pretty cool feature yesterday from Seth Duckworth at the Pistols firing blog about Adnan LKC. Yeah, you might recognize that name, known as General Adnan from his professional wrestling days. Al KC is some Iraq, was an All-American wrestler at Oklahoma State, and knew Saddam Hussein. This is kind of a crazy stuff. Now, side note, General Adnan Al KC does live here in Minnesota. He is on my list of people to get on short time in that pro wrestling series that I've been talking about for, oh, I don't know, a year or five. I made an appearance on Purdue's Always Aggressive podcast, and while that isn't on the network, whenever I get to do a guest spot on another show, it'll show up in the feed. Cliff Fretwell from Compound released an episode of The Hustle, since ever since with North Carolina head wrestling coach Coleman Scott. That's worth checking out in the finals. Sorry, Cliff. I love you, man. I've also got a new episode of the OD Wrestling Monarch Batcast with associate head coach Daryl Thomas. You can get to read those stories and more from Matt Talk Online's daily wrestling newsletter. Sign up for free at matttalkonline.com and get today's top wrestling news stories from around the world delivered to your inbox for free every single morning. The Matt Talk Online daily wrestling newsletter is sponsored by Resolite. If you'd like to support the show and all the on-demand audio offerings, free newsletters, and historical research, you can support this program and the network by making a small monthly contribution or one-time donation by going to matttalkonline.com slash join the team. Venmo, PayPal, buymeacoffee.com are all accepted, but there's that perk with that monthly Patreon contribution. You get the cool things like Matt Talk Online branded shirts, glasses, and hats, the sport's best digital preview guides, shout-outs on the show in either guest spot, or pitch your own idea or interview suggestion for a future episode of Short Time. The Short Time Wrestling Podcast is proudly outfitted by my man Cliff Fretwell at Compound Sportswear. And if you're just joining us and just chiming in, thank you for your time and spending it with me because you've always got time for Short Time.